Hello everyone, welcome to Samurai Gamer's channel. This is D2 along with Green. Hi Green. Hello D2. And we're going to be talking about our hero tier list. Now we've never done a YouTube video about our tier list before, but it's by far our most popular article on the site. And we figured why not get some extra views <laughs> by making a video about it. And also we can explain our picks a little bit more than what we have written, even though we wrote literally a paragraph about every single one of them. Indeed. Now, before we get started, we have to say that we have been looking at our Reddit posts, and, and people have been kind of mean, so uh, apologies if we're a little bit defensive of some of our choices, but that said, let's just move on to the tier list and explain away. All right, so this is our seventh edition, and every time we have a new edition, we make some changes to the structure of it. Uh, previous to this, we had this kind of nebulous Rome roll that we decided to get rid of, try to make things a bit easier for people to know where to go, rather than being vague. And our job is to teach people how to play, right? So we can't just have vague terms in there. Um, going right. on... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say we want to be as clear as possible to help everyone, not just people who are training up to fight Vex. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I should also mention that I wrote this intro, and you wrote the blurbs, and right. I edited the blurbs and added some stuff where necessary. So, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So, next, the king is dead. So, before this tier, or excuse me, Superman was in his own tier. We made a tier SS for the super strong heroes, and after a while, the only one left remaining was Superman. He was extremely strong. I mean, for multiple reasons, he's super you know, tanky, he does a ton of damage, has a crazy amount of CC, just knockbacks people to hell, essentially. And, yeah, and had a crazy mobility, obviously. So, he was in tier SS for a while. They nerfed his damage two patches ago, but that wasn't enough to bring him down. And then, finally, they nerfed his knockback. And now, he's finally in tier just S. <laughs> right? He's in Thank tier S. goodness. Now. Exactly. He got brought down to still being at the top, but has to share the spotlight, which is good enough. And speaking of sharing the spotlight, we have 25 heroes in tier S. And when we were making this tier list, we were looking at the tier S, and we're thinking, we literally can't drop any one of these heroes. And mm. <laughs> like, they're all basically the same tier. And the funny thing is, like, it's strange to have so like the biggest group of heroes be at the top and all of them be the strongest you know but we just looked at it and said well they're the strongest and they're all equal strength basically mm, pretty much and the funny thing is we always made fun of tencent for you know barely nerfing people they give like a little slap on the wrist to people like liliana and you know superman for instance and we're like that's definitely not going to make any difference but they just keep doing tiny tiny nerfs and eventually Everyone's just kind of balanced out. It's kind of amazing how that worked out. Yeah, I'm rather impressed because every time I would see changes, I'd be like, uh, that's not going to change anything. They take away, like, two points of damage from Superman. <sighs> but no, they've done that. Like, Tulin's had a chain like that. Liliana's had a chain like that. L'Oreal. And none of them are, like, the shining beacon on the hill anymore. And we have to say that we've had we've already had people complain about how many people we've had in tier S, but our initial defense, our first defensive moment, is that we think that people are suffering a little bit from out of sight, out of mind. There are many kind of hero of the moment heroes, right? In which they, you know, they're seeing all of the ladder, all of a pro play. And just because you're not seeing them on the ladder doesn't mean they're not still good. For instance, we had a lot of complaints about Tulin. Which surprised me. Yeah, he's been falling down a little bit, but uh, the recent meta goes really fast. And he is an early game hero, so... Ergo, he should still be good. His only real weakness is, I mean, obviously late game. And, but the other thing is he doesn't have a lot of AoE damage, which I guess is great for, you know, those team fights. But other than that, I don't really see the argument for pushing Tulin down just because you don't see him very much. That's true. And I think that also sometimes heroes are good even if they're not popular with certain pro players so you might not see them as much talk this about this earlier in that um max gets a lot of criticism on the list um 
but it seems to mostly be because he's not popular to play. Um, either due to him being a bit more difficult and having ultimate that can very easily be flubbed up. Um, but there's a lot of good things that can be said about Max uh, to defend his position on the list. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir here because I'm literally a Max main. 400 <laughs> games, 400 games, sixty above 60% win rate. I literally made Masters with basically just Max. And... Mm -hmm. You know, in a in a meta that favors Violet and Lindus, being able to directly target those marksmen is pretty good, I would say. Oh yeah, very much. And speaking of which, our next point in our introduction is that marksmen and junglers are upon us. Lindus, Rourke, Violet, Fennec, Slims, they clear the way they clear the jungle, excuse me, super quickly. And they just spike in power so quickly that it's hard for traditional assassins to keep up. And even the assassins who do keep up, they fall off in the late game, whereas these marksmen don't really. Absolutely. Um, especially given how, like, every single assassin that I would go to, with some exception, was um, caveat, if you can catch them, they're dead. Right. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to, let's get to the symbols first. Um, part of our tier list is we like to make it simple. Now, a lot of other tier lists, they separate the tier list into roles. So essentially, if a hero is decent in two roles, decent enough to be on the tier list twice, then that just makes things confusing, right? Because, okay, where are they in this role? Should we be playing them in this role? And to kind of avoid that confusion, we just have the tiers and we put the heroes in the tiers, but we have a symbol. I think this is our most important symbol. The one we added a couple tier lists to go to Tilda, in which if you're not playing the hero in their primary role, they're going to have their value diminish significantly. Whereas, you know, there's a lot of heroes where no matter what role you play them in, they're always going to be good, right? Whether you're playing a mm. mid, whether you're kind of your team kind of in a weird draft and you're kind of forced to go to a solo lane on the side, it's like. So there's some heroes, it doesn't really matter. They're always going to be good. Whereas if you're trying to play Alice Jungle, it's going to be terrible, right? So it's just one Absolutely. of those things. Or, or like but with the example we give here is you're not going to, if you play Butterfly in a lane, you're going to be having a tough time unless you know, the opposing solo laner is just incompetent and can't take you out. Correct. Um, the other ones are just the plus, you know, just the, the amount, the uh, hero's rating is highly dependent on the player skill. We've act I've actually taken a lot of those out as far as the, the ranges because players are just better now i used to say like oh this mm. hero's you know tier three to one or two to ss or something like that something weird right depending on the the skill and really the only hero who i who i've kept that in for is the croth sorry <laughs> i almost called it vex <laughs> because like literally it's the first person to think of. <laughs> he might as well be vex right and so that's the only one I left in. Every single other hero, it's kind of like, well, it's a given, right? If you're not good, you're not going to be good with a hero. So I've kept it in mm. for a couple of heroes, but, you know, it's starting to have a little bit less of a, of a meaning, which is which is a good thing. Um, mm. Mm. The other mark, we had the, we had the carrot. <clears throat> and this is nice as well because people are catching up to the pro scene. So I, I removed some of the carrots as well. It used to be like, well, you know, Tell is better in ladder games than she is in pro games or organized games because people will seek her out and kill her in pro games or organized games, whereas on ladder, people she just, like, owns, right? Which used to be the case a few patches ago. Um, but people are better, and they're really good at diving, <laughs> and she's also not a marksman jungler. So one of those things where we've removed the carrot from a lot of heroes because the ladder is more closely reflecting pro play, which is, again, really good. Yes, very nice. And our hashtag or pound or whatever you want to call it, uh, this one is still pretty relevant. As good as people have gotten with com uh, communicating and cooperating with each other, there's still those heroes where you have to have like ultimate communication and and you know collaboration, whatever you want to call it. Um, those being like Mina, your Greg, your Alice. You know, I've I don't know how many times we've seen Alice stuck in a lane by herself, and it's like, please, someone switch with me. <laughs> so always a tragedy when it happens. Her and Pura. Every time I see. A pure stuck alone. I just want to light one up for the <laughs> poor person left alone. Yep, absolutely. Well, 
Um, our roles are pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Now that we've gotten rid of Rome, they're actually pretty close to what you just see generally. We just have jungle, DS lane support. Uh, damage is just generally someone who would be like your traditional dual lane marksman. Um, but we don't have a lot of damages in our thing. Basically, you're just, you're just the damage, right? Whether you're in a soul lane or dual lane or what, what have you. You're basically like a ranged damage dealer, whether you're a mage or marksman. And finally, we have Mitt, who is usually mages, with some exceptions, like Joker. Um, this is our little graphic. If you guys want to share that, please do so. Go to our tier list and share with your friends. All right, let's get started. 71 heroes. Let's go. Number one, the Flash. And I've talked for a while, so I'm going to let you take the stage. All right. So the Flash is, in many ways, a mage Murad. However, is a bit easier to use given his ultimate is, does not have any sort of finicky mechanic to deal with, whereas Murad has to attack four times before his is unlocked. The Flash can just use his willy-nilly, his super speed always available to him. What a stunning person. <laughs> now, he has become one of the most frequently banned and picked mages recently, and probably one of the first people that players would think of when they think of the strongest mage in the game because he's got damage he's got mobility he might not have the highest health pool but his iframes and his mobility make him really hard to catch up with to where a good flash can be absolutely devastating especially now that players have started to figure out how to play with him he's relatively new coming out at the beginning of the summer so um, he's now starting to really solidify his place in the meta. And while most other mages have been receiving quite a few nerfs, his have always come with a buff to balance it out. <laughs> so, which yeah. has been... Go ahead. Gotta love the DC heroes, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, just to clarify, iframes means invincibility frames, which means you cannot be damaged at all. So that's what you're, he's re Cody's referring to, Green's referring to. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So my quick two cents on Flash are that he is almost always going to be good, other than, you know, apart from the DC factor, because he fits in the dive comp, where you can just dive someone and kill them. But he also fits in a poke comp, because he just... Poke gets in there, damages, and just jumps out. He's basically a poke and a dive at the same time because he can get in and out, which is very, very useful <laughs> to be able to get in and out. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, and to go with that, he's he's most commonly picked in the mid lane, but if you used him as a jungle, he's not that much less effective. Um, so he's rather versatile for being such a strong hero. So... Yeah, the nice that flexibility adds a lot. The nice thing, I think, I forgot when I saw that. It might have been during AWC boot camp. But the nice thing about the Flash being able to do jungle like that is if you know that your opponents have, you know, certain preferences, like, you know, they like... I think at the time, the opponents liked Tulin and Flash. And mm. they just took both. They're like, okay, we could put Tulin in the side lane, or you could put Flash in the jungle, and we could still have a reasonable comp, and we robbed you of the mages that you wanted to play. Oh. Yeah. So... And that is something to think about because, especially with a limited number of bands, being able to pick um, him, even if he might not be the first or what would be the more standard thing, but still fit into your team and do well, robs your opponent of that pick. Yeah, just the flexibility is so valuable. Anyway, we promise that every single hero is not going to be that long. Otherwise, this is going to be eight hours. <laughs> let's just... Let's we're, we're just really digging for that DC sponsorship. Exactly. All right, let's move on. Uh, we have, we've already had some people complain about the Rourke placement. I don't think there's anything wrong with Rourke here. He, does, he still does the exact same thing. He just... As before. It's just that he can't just cheese down towers. Right. And that wasn't the only thing that made him strong. Um, he is... One-on-one, -on -one, a nightmare to deal with because his damage is fantastic and his durability is really high. He can be immune to crowd control all in one studly package. Man, that mustache. <laughs> um, he's not broken, but that's mostly due to people now knowing how to counterplay him 
it was pitched so frequently due to the bug before leading to some easy victories that people were forced to learn how to play against him, which is you duke around minions or you go at him with several people or and most importantly if he uses his ultimate run away and wait for it to wear off yep he's way weaker um but that said despite all these negatives he shines so well in, in the places where he does do well which is dueling his jungle clear speed is fantastically fast i think I can normally get through the jungle with him in about a minute, 20 seconds, which is crazy. Um, that yeah. he's just a really yeah. solid pick. And people underestimate the ability of a jungler to solo the Abyssal Dragon or the Dark Slayer. Because you can have your mm. team just distracting. And when you, when you can't, when the only person you can't see on the map is one hero, you don't think they're taking the Abyssal or the Dark Slayer. It's like, wait, they just took it? What the That's hell? That's true. Happened? Uh, I haven't tested with the new monsters, but with the old Dark Slayer, with at six pretty... minutes when he spawned, if I had Soul Reaver, War Boots, and um, the Beast, I could easily solo the Dark Slayer and walk away with basically full health. Right. So he can do a lot to the epic creatures. Yeah. Um... Anyway, uh, what I was going to say is that I think that. A lot of the people who are complaining about his placement here are people who actually are capable of playing against him. And we, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but we might have to drop him next tier list, or maybe two, li mm. two tier lists from now if, if nothing changes, just because the trickle-down effect will slowly be there, right? People will slowly you know, learn how to play against him more and more and more, Whereas mm. where, where you'll see like Plat and Gold and even Silver being able to play against him. Whereas right now, it's only, I would say, like the Masters players are really capable of countering him. Mm. <clears throat> All right. But the average player will still find him in about the same potency as an S rank. Exactly. All right. Got to go faster. <laughs> that was still too long. All right. <laughs> okay. Fast. All right. All right. TV. Uh, we had some complaints about TV too for some reason. TV Resurrect is really good. Got slightly nerfed. Uh, but you can turn around a fight completely. And, Absolutely. And got all those stuns. Yeah, and got buffed by the new. Uh, items you already has a really mm -hmm. good um basically teamy's passive is like the wind items but you know now you can get the water items give you even more or sorry it's like the water items excuse me it's kind of like them both put together to be honest but yeah you can ben benefit <clears throat> from both um so so players will have to think about which to get but those i think more than make up for the nerf he got and he has been getting a series of nerfs recently, mm -hmm. but I don't think that he's lost enough utility to not be really good on teams. He's just not stupid good anymore. I mean, TJ and I were casting some of the EU Valor Suits qualifiers, and he was just as devastating. So I am, <clears> we are not ready to give up on Team E yet. He's still too no, no, no. in our opinion. All right, next Especially two. if people are going after Violet and Lindis, and he can revive them. Exactly. All right, next, Tulin. Right. Once more, <laughs> a hero who people are complaining about who should be lower. He has started to fall a bit out of favor, but still extremely strong and can mm. completely just shut down mid lane and make it difficult for the opposing side. And also the fact that he's such an early game hero. I mean, you pair him with like a Lindis who can just jungle super quickly, you can completely snowball the game, and it'll be completely over. Mm. And like Flash, he also can find a lot of use in both mid lane and the jungle to wear. And isn't necessarily that much worse of a pick, either way. Alright, let's move on then. Uh, we still think two lids good. Sorry, guys. Uh, the Joker. Joker, this is kind of... um. This is kind of like my stand that I've my uh, rock, what's the saying? The rock that I die on? <laughs> the, I think the hill that I die on. The, the hill that I die on. Because, like, okay. To spoil alerts, uh, Violet and Lindus are in tier S. But people have been saying that they're SSSSS, right? But Joker counters both of those heroes. So, color me uh, you know, perplexed as to why people are so low on Joker. I think what they're thinking is that you would rather have other marksmen. But you can have... Your cake and eat it too. You can have Lindis and Joker on the same team. It's not 
he, he plays. Yeah, they don't even really fill the same role as Lindis or. Not even Violet, close. Not even close. He's more of an assassin. <laughs> he's a mid and a support and assassin. Like he plays like literally all the things that they don't. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. So I think people are a bit too hung up on roles and thinking, oh, it says marksman, so therefore we can't have the two of them on the same team. Like no, they're they're completely different. Mm -hmm. And if they're t trying to fit him in the role of Lindis and Violet, yes, he's not good like that, but he's good as he is. We should say right Remember now. They're looking at... <clears throat> oh, go sorry. Ahead. We should say right now that uh, we have one mid and two support. We've mentioned him as him as a support. Some people might be confused by that, but watch some pro games. He's very potent as a support. You basically use your passive to completely slow down people all the time. Once you get your four, you can do the same thing, and then you basically turn from a support into a damage dealer into in the late game, and it's it's really nice. Hmm. All right, moving on. Lindis. Lindis, extremely good. I don't think anyone's going to complain other than that maybe she'd be in tier SS. But we talked about this earlier. We don't think she's as broken as Superman was. We don't want to make an S.5 tier. So she's fine as she is. By the way, she got nerfed recently, so there's that as well. Yeah. Our thinking with the SS tier was basically that the old Superman changed the game when he was in it so much that the entire enemy team had to focus on him or not be able to deal with him. Lindis, a good marksman of the other side, let's say Slims, who we have in A. Um, one. <laughs> good Slims, or sorry, one. I'll get mixed up because we started this. But a good Slims could take out an okay Lindis, right. while before an okay Superman could still do a lot of trouble to people who are good with their hero. Right. Not to mention that Linda still needs protection. You still need mm. people to protect her. Like if you you can, you know, kill her by jumping her. So it's not something where like if two people decide to focus Linda, or even just one extremely, you know, skillful assassin or you know like a, mm. a warrior who can jump to the back line, then she's dead, right? Whereas one extremely skillful person is not going to take down another skillful Superman. It just wasn't going to happen. Mm. <clears throat> Alright. Um, next, Max. We talked about this before. Kind of perplexing that people don't like Max. It's just they probably haven't seen him on ladder, and so therefore they assume he's not very good. Uh, we were talking about this before we started recording, and we think that a lot of reasons why pros don't pick Max is not because they can't counter the marksman, but they're kind of worried about him being able to play against the other solo laners. And... They're out of practice with him. They haven't played him for a few months. And you need to have good practice with the heroes. And the worst thing you can do is go into, you know, a, a televised game, a streamed game to hundreds of thousands of viewers, which, you know, the GCS and the RPL are, and pick a hero who you're not experienced with and who is a little bit off meta and lose, and then everyone laughs at you. So there's a little bit of fear there. And I think that a lot of non-practice goes into as well with Max. But he it can... Didn't help. Oh, sorry. But he, I was going to say, it didn't help that before the um, more recent tournaments, he was, for example, at the AWC Finals, he was permabanned. Every single match, he was either um, banned or picked. So, if that happens, people don't typically <clears throat> practice with or against that hero because they don't think that it'll come up. See, also at the AWC Finals, when Superman became available, both teams that picked them lost, not having to practice playing with them. Yeah. And I just want to say to everyone out there, he, you know, with Violet and Linda's being good, maybe pick a guy who can dive directly to the back line. <laughs> um, I was, uh, if you aren't a Max main, let me just tell you right now, way easier to kill Violet than Linda's. Uh, Linda's can just run away for forever. She's near bushes, which a lot of times she is since you're fighting in the jungle a lot. Uh, but, Typically, you have their support and the Lindis. You're chasing them down. They're both chasing you. Now you have a 4v3 against a team with no damage dealer other than their mage. So usually you win that one. Violet, you can literally just kill her by yourself. So, yeah. Mm. Give him a try. All right. And who doesn't like the Incredibles? <laughs> exactly. All right. Zephyrus. So, Zephyrus, the only problem with Zephyrus, even though they gave him a buff, uh, I think we were wondering why they gave him a buff. 
I know I'm going on eight tangents right now, but we were wondering why mm. they gave him a buff, and we believe it's to kind of counter the marksman jungler meta right now, but he was already good, and they made him better. So I feel like people mm. should just give Zephyrus a try once more. He's really, really good. He can do tons of... He has the Superman effect from earlier, where he can do tons of damage while building tankily, and since he's already tanky, that makes him incredibly difficult to kill. Right. And he's lost CC as well, which is guys. Yeah. <clears throat> CC damage tanky. Pick Zephyrus. And he's mobile. Alright, next, Violet. So, Violet was already extremely good before the rework. Not so much, well, kind of. They move stuff around. They didn't really consider it a buff, speaking of Tencent, but if you looked at the numbers, they barely took any, way, any damage off of her tactical fire. Especially considering that the extra 0.5 wasn't getting multiplied during critical hits anyway. So mm. it took a slight nerf to the tactical fire and made her concussive rounds and fire in the hole extremely better. She basically went from a one skill hero to a three skill hero. Right. The thing is, <laughs> we've seen a lot of comments on the reddits and etc. say, Oh, I just got crit for a billion damage. Like They nerfed that part. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like people think that she got that like the entire kit got buffed and like oh my god look at how much damage she's doing. It's like, but you're talking about the part that got nerfed. So yeah. Mm -hmm. That said, she's extremely good. Uh, if we don't really want to put her in tier SS already after just two weeks of play in Taiwan and just less than a week of playing in other Tencent servers, so we're keeping an eye on her. If she continues to be absolutely bonkers, then we might raise her, but again, we're not going to overreact right now. Alright, Yoma. Uh, Yoma got buffed, which means he is very capable of just staying in the lane a lot longer. A lot of times when you got low, you just had to go back, right? Or <laughs> just try to outplay your, your opponent with like two health. Uh, now you can actually heal on the minions, which is a bigger deal than it seems. Oh, yeah, it's very helpful. I play a lot of Yoma. And it's been very nice, especially since a lot of other um, Slayer Lane heroes like Lubu and Roxy and Wonder Woman and Scud all have self-heals. Uh, so being able to have something to regenerate in between, way, uh, in between fights has been extremely helpful in letting me stay out and keep getting experience in gold. Right, not to mention that Spectral Ire is extremely low cooldown, so you can just kind of use it on the minion wave and still have it a little bit lower. Oh, yeah. We should also say that we're both based in Japan, so we like to say Doma correctly instead of, like, Ryoma. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryo Ryoma. <laughs> All right. Next, Murad. So, Murad is a very polarizing hero. Some people think he's completely broken. Some people think he's completely trash. Part of it has to do with the mirror that you face on ladder and how good that person mm. is. Part of it has to do with some people being very experienced playing against Murad and you know lo knowing to look for the shadow and knowing to knowing exactly how his cooldown works and his ultimate and you know how many seconds. I have to tell you, it's a world of difference. I literally have played like five or six games of Murad in my life, and I knew immediately that I wasn't going to be ever good be good at him. But just those games have made it so much better to play against him because you can time out his ultimate so much better. It's like, you're mm -hmm. base, as he's walking towards you, you're like, two, one. Okay, you can't use ultimate anymore. I, I know. I've used him before. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's a good um, rule to take with pretty much any hero you have trouble with. Play as them and see how people beat you. Um, then use that to beat them. But Murad is very much a pub stomp hero, but he can still do very well in more um, higher ranked games um, with someone who knows what they're doing because like the flash it can he can be really hard to deal with his main hang up compared to the flash is that his ultimate requires the to the unsealing to be able to use but as a trade-off it has a fantastically low cooldown it's like around 10 seconds which is kind of crazy um, because a good Murad will be able to do that three or four times in a tier team fight. Sorry, just checking his cooldown. It's 12 seconds, and a lot of times he has Soul Reaver. 
which means it very yeah. a lot shorter. So yeah, it's usually like nine seconds or so. When uh, yeah, quite <clears throat> quite short. Yeah, it's a lot of damage too. And the the biggest thing is not his ult, but his. I mean, as far as like the cooldowns are concerned, the biggest thing are his uh, his first two abilities, which go down in a lot. Like for instance, his thorn of time goes from twelve seconds to five seconds. That means he like he can get in, get out, use his thorn of time again, and then have it available yeah. like once more for his ultimate. So before, if you, like he would be very difficult for him to use his ult early game because you could catch him. Late game is he's so hard to catch. So yeah, absolutely. But that said, if you're bad at Murad, you jump in there, Violet, he, one tactical fire, you have, you know, 25% health, and then you're like, okay, gotta get out of here. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Alright, next. Aram is pretty insane. She's just so flexible, because worst case scenario, her ult is just ridiculously hard to deal with. Oh yeah, it's an, one of the only abilities I can think of that is not affected by resistance, you can't break out of it, it's just a, a first priority suppression in every way. And right. a lot of people don't know not to attack Aram when she is <laughs> using the ability. I've died several times because people are like, She's not moving! Get her! <laughs> and meanwhile, she's healing off of people who are trying to attack her. Yeah, she's healing while um, the person she's held on to's health just plummets to zero. Um but even if people knew to counterplay her that way, she would be fairly strong. Being able to take um, three people on at level one, pretty good. Right. Yeah, and I, I focus on her ult just because it's so oppressive in both situations, whether defending towers or trying to siege towers. She's one of the best siegers in the game, despite having like no actual siege ability herself. Because I'm mm. sitting there behind a tower, two people walk up, and I have, you know, 50% health. Normally, I could just clear the wave and run away. But she starts walking toward you like, oh, I'm going to die if I stay here. <laughs> I, goodbye, yeah. goodbye tower, I guess. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's just, it's so hard to deal with. And like we mentioned, her, her lions, it's so, you need, you're just kind of sitting there like, I can't do anything. Marksman, could you, could you come here? Could you, could you help me, please? I, I can't do, I literally cannot damage her without you. So, yeah. All right. She will be a bit less oppressive now that there's more marksmen in the meta. Well, you would you you would think so, but that means that like before there was an assassin and a marksman. If you have your traditional dual lane setup, right? And assassins mm -hmm. they do more damage than she can heal, unlike you know a lot of warriors, right? So you have the assassin killing her and the marksman killing her. Now you have only a marksman, and the two soul laners aren't mm -hmm. going to kill her fast enough. So actually, she still does fine. And, and the marksman has to specifically rotate to her. And if she's in the lane opposite the abyssal or whatever objective there is, then the person having to deal with her is just going to have a hard time. So, mm. anyway. Uh, Kilgroth is someone who we were thinking, was like, well, should we keep him in tier S? But he's just so impossible to deal with. Uh, when, you know, you can't leave, he just kills towers. He can, you know, take on multiple heroes in the fight and heal a lot. And the... Biggest thing for him is that, again, it comes down to, we don't see him in, like, pro play, pro matches, but it's kind of the same thing, out of sight, out of mind. He's still a really good hero. Mm, he's very good. And being able to lock down both epic creatures later in the game, because you can solo them with zero problem, is really big for your team. While, because, again, if the enemies only see one hero missing, they're not going to guess you're at the epic creature... And if you're pushing maybe to their tier 2 towers, they won't be able to check you well anyway if the other four heroes are pushing down at the lanes. So it can turn a slight lead into a really far lead just if the Kilgroth is moving between the epic creatures. Yeah, and he's kind of the OG Rourke as well, right? You, if, there's someone, mm -hmm. if there's someone beneath a tower, like if, if it's a 1v1 tower and they're like on the high ground and you have minions coming in, he can literally kill a tower before they can kill you, even if the tower's shooting mm. you. So it's just oh, yeah. it's it's, so ridiculous. He's one who, if you see him near a tower, you might as well go to the next tower because you're not going to make it in time. You right. can't get there before he knocks it down. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Liliana. Liliana's a funny one because she got slightly nerfed and then slightly nerfed again. They were like, eh, I guess it's enough. She was still played quite a lot and one of the top mm. tier mages at the AWC. 
And kind of like funnily enough, we were we were the, one of the first ones to say, eh, she's not as good as people think. And then people just zoomed right past us with their opinion. They went from, oh my god, she's broken, to oh my god, she's terrible. And I don't know how that happened. <laughs> and like, like I thought we were the ones who said she wasn't that, wasn't as good as people think, but we still think she's S. And the reason why is because she has so much utility. She can do so much. She has seven abilities. And the difference is you can't just win with Shining Light anymore. You know, I, mm. the, I think the biggest thing with her is that, you know, we, we affects the, the plus to her. Maybe we should actually put, you know, she's actually really good if, she, if you're good with her. But mm. the thing with her is you can't, just spam Shining Light and win games anymore. You have to actually use all of her kit, which means you have to use the fact that she's a mage assassin. And I think mm. that's soiled, you know, her the opinion for her for a lot of people. And kind of, she has like the Raz treatment from like a few patches ago where Raz was still good, but people didn't really feel like playing Raz because there's heroes that are just as good but easier to play. I think that's the spot Liliana is in right now. She's just as good that's as the top tier mages. She's just harder to play because now you can't just rely on her human form to do everything for her. I think that's a big part of it. There's also probably a bit of Rark effect is that she was so good before that a lot of people chose her. So a lot of people were forced to learn how to play against her. So now that she's more in line with a lot of other heroes, people still know how to play against her. So um, she's not picked as frequently. Yeah, it's a double effect, right? People can't people yeah. know how to play against her, and the people who have played her now have to be better with her. Mm. All right, Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman is not really seen very much. Um, that said, no one had any complaints with her here, so pretty much people are in agreement, I would imagine. Um, she just does everything well. She's good in the Slayer lane, and when she gets in team fights, she can stun groups of people while shielding her allies it's you know it's that's really good yeah basically just being able to be a good ds laner and then be a good team fighter at the same time is extremely valuable and she can initiate well <laughs> eh, so right. she's got a lot going on even if she's not like stupid broken she's just very good in a lot of regards like for instance if you look at another hero on this list on in tier s which is omen he's way better at being a DS laner than he is being a team fighter, right? Like he can he can pick people off. Oh, absolutely. But he can't actually, you know, just set up for his team the way Wonder Woman can. Unless you count setting up, you know, picking someone off and then having a 5v4. That is something, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly, you know, 5v5 charge head on each other. Wonder Woman's way better at that. Absolutely. All right. And yeah. Okay, moving on. Yes. All right. Xenial. Xenio, he's been just up and down and up and down. Let's just constantly. <laughs> People, we've kept him in tier S, but, you know, he's been... He, sometimes he's constabanned in tournaments. Sometimes it, he just get, just goes through the entire draft, draft process entirely for, you know, weeks at a time. It's kind of bizarre to me, but in the ladder, in ladder, he's just extremely good. Uh, <clears throat> he builds... He builds damage as he builds health, which is extremely powerful, and he is a, has a global ult. The one weakness I would say Xenial has, um, other than not being like perfect, you know, he doesn't have like every, I was gonna say like his his kit is good, but you know maybe if he had a dash like flashes or something like that, obviously that's mm -hmm. not the case. But I would say, you know, among normal problems, uh, the biggest thing for him, he has a very weak early game, uh, and he can get oh, yeah. he can get bullied out of the light. People will think that. He, you know, always DS line. He can duel people. Like no, especially not in the early game. So. No, oh, yeah, and though to kind of defend his position here, despite going up and down, he still has going for him that he can push the DS lane while being present in team fights. Because if the team fight breaks out, um, he can just ult over, and this forces the enemy to either. Um, always be countering him in the DS lane and risk him ulting over and start having a 5v4 team fight, or ignore him in the DS lane so that they can have an even team fight, but then they are opening up their towers to get angelically 
smite, smitten, smited? <laughs> smited, smitten? Smitten. They will fall in love with Xenial, much like I have. <laughs> uh, one unnoticed thing about Xenial, if you're playing with or against him, always pay attention to his third attacks. I think his passive is called Holy Brand. It literally does thousands more damage. So pay, mm. att pay attention to it. Because <laughs> that makes a big deal when taking like uh, objectives or trying to finish someone off. <clears throat> Alright, Malok is always been tier S. I don't think anyone's had a problem with being in tier S unless people just are angry that they didn't win with him. He does a lot of damage and he's very tanky. It's just kind of really, really good. <laughs> One of the best set up, um, ways to set up team fights in the game, I would say, is shock. Um, just because how devastating it can be. Huge AoE knockoff and slow afterwards. Does it do damage? I don't think it does damage. Hmm? I mean the area afterwards rather than the initial impact. Uh, we can look um, it up. It slows. But even if you miss, you're basically denying that area to the enemy and gives them a much harder time fighting. Um, so really the only problem I think he has is he's very slow. Right. And he overcomes that slowness by having... 400 attack range, which is double the range of most heroes, and his cleave is massive. So, yeah. people, it's it's hard to run away. Even heroes who have a very good range and or mobility, if you mess up once, you just get caught in his cleave, and then all of, all of a sudden he has lots of lifesteal, and you're feeling sad. Mm -hmm. so. Oh yeah, not a very fun time. Alright, next, let's go to Lubu. Now, Lubu had a crazy buff on Conqueror. Oh, yeah. Went from 20% resistance, which, by the way, if you don't know, is resistance to crowd control or, like, slow stuns, all that kind of stuff. So if you have 20%, say there's a one-second stun, it goes to 0.8 seconds, right? Now it goes 30. It starts out at 30, so it's buffed from the very beginning of the game. His his mm -hmm. tier, his tier, level 4 conquer is better than his previous level 12 conquer, right? And uh, on top of that, it goes to 40 at tier eight, at level 8, and then... 50% at level 12. That's insane. 50% Almost is, max. Yeah, the maximum resistance is 60%. And to give you a comparison, Guild of Greaves gives you 30%, 35%. They used to be the mo most in the game before max came along. But it's absolutely insane. He could just not buy Guild of Greaves and have more resistance with Conqueror than any other heroes are capable of, even with boots. So <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, especially in such a CC-focused meta recently that is huge in being able to stop enemies for example roxy has got has been popular recently but her ultimate which a lot of people have said is very devastating is affected by resistance so luber would be able to walk away after less than one second of being fire grabbed yeah same with arm by the way same with arm same oh, with okay. omen every single thing that's you know stops you is Reduced by that, <clears throat> which is crazy. So yeah, and even before that, he was a very strong DS laner. Right. I just remember all seeing the the AWC and seeing the the duels between Lubu and Kilgroth. Just like they both do a lot of damage, but they both both also have lots of yeah. healing. So it just looked like a wet noodle fight, like no one killing the a, other. <laughs> a huge battle with both enemies walking away with full health. Yeah, exactly. All right, Roxy got pretty nerfed, but. From my experience, she's still devastating. So it looked much worse than it ended up being, like a thousand health. That I think it the nerf was a thousand health at level fifteen, and I forget how much armor and not negligible amount of armor. But from playing against her and with her, she's still doing very well in the lane. So I don't think she deserves falling down to tier one. Yeah, and if you consider the fact that people were already just going crazy with her, having not that much experience, then mm -hmm. you, ha you have to figure a nerf was warranted because he was only going to get more oppressive. Absolutely. All right, next, our favorite hero, Superman. Superman! <laughs> so he had kind of... Was it a bug? It seems like it was a bug because visually it was supposed to be 300 units and it did feel like a bug when it was happening to you because the screen would just shake and kind of jilt and you're like, what just happened? I just got moved across the screen. The screen can't even keep up with how much he's knocked me back. But 
Now it only moves them back 300 units rather than 400, which is still a sizable knockback, but not, you know, not like what the hell just happened to levels. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's been much easier to deal with. Especially a good Superman could knock you back two, three, four times using, I don't know what you build. Uh, maybe Speeding Bullet is the one that makes his ultimate fill up really fast. Yeah, we know I don't the, know the names of the abilities so well. We just test all of them um, and know the numbers. We don't know. Yeah, I know what they do. I can be like, oh, it's the Spenny one. <laughs> um, it's called Speeding Bullet, yeah. Yeah, but so not being completely knocked back from your ba um, tower to the enemy tower is much nicer. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go to Omen, who was previously his counter. Um, <clears throat> now, the funny thing is you might think that Omen may have gotten worse because he was the counter to Superman, but he was already picked before Superman. Mm. Like, Superman was getting banned, and they were just picking Omen or banning Omen anyway in professional matches. And... Not only that, but now that Superman's been going to be played more, going to be, you know, flying past the band stage, but into the pick stage a bit more, then mm -hmm. Omen's even better. But Omen's just so devastating. And kind of strangely a difficult hero to play, even though he just relies on auto attacks. It's, it's bizarre. Well, part of his difficulty comes from his abilities don't really affect his damage output directly. Um, one is a mini... Devil's Chain, and the other one is basically just a damage reduction. So he, he, people have to think about their approach without being like, oh, I do ability one, ability two, and if I do them right, I win. Yeah, the, the funniest thing is when <clears throat> they use, um, what's it called, Thirst? Not Thirst, Thirst is his passive. Uh, what's uh, it? When they use uh, which one? Untouchable. Uh, uh, untouchable, yeah, that one. I knew Death's, Death's Beckon and Death's Embrace, but Untouchable. Anyway, the funniest thing is when an Omen Untouchable is up to me, and I'm like, you don't have any resistance now. You're going to die. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's that was your... I know it's your movement speed boost, boost, but that was a bad idea. You are dead now. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, children always use Untouchable <laughs> after the fight has started. Yes. And the damage resistance... I would argue that damage resistance is the most powerful stat in the game, because nothing beats damage resistance. Damage resistance lowers true damage. So, being able to put that on yourself regularly is very nice. Yep. I guess we should call it damage reduction to not uh, confuse damage with reduction? Res resistance. Oh, I guess they do call it reduction. I've been calling it resistance. Uh, but yeah, too, but damage, redu damage reduction. The one what Omen has. Alright, Jinnar, this is the hill that we both die on, I suppose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He was, okay, so back like five patches ago, he was tier two, like solidly in tier two. You're, you're run-of-the-mill mid-level mid mage, right? It's good. Back before the Jin apocalypse started. <laughs> when, when he was decent, he could die the backlight. You know, he was very durable. He could, I mean, I guess people didn't like him because he wasn't your typical burst mage. But they continuously just buffed his damage, buffed his damage. They buffed his resistance on his Nirvana. They just kept buffing and buffing and buffing him. And we're like, well, they're, if they're going to keep buffing him, if they if you add three buffs to a tier two hero, then that makes him a tier one hero, kind of like by default. So we moved him to oh, tier yeah. one. And then people kept thinking he was bad. Like, no, he's pretty good. Just tr give him a try. I know you never see him on ladder, but give him a try. And the funny thing is everyone kept coming back to us saying like, yeah, wow, he's actually really good. This was pre-patched, by the like, way. I know, right? He's <laughs> very good and no one likes him. And they buffed him again. And then they buffed him. Again! Exactly. And the funny thing He's is... like the anti-Ignis. And our, our description here, they basically gave him an, another ability, right? Like like you mentioned with Violet, how she gained oh, two yeah. abilities. You never even wanted to press your two, right? Which is Suture of Pain. You never... It was just like this slow, but it stunned yourself to use it, because you had to stop to use it. So there was no reason to use it. And it's... The, being able to use that now is so huge because you just never used that build before and now you actually it's a great way to deal more damage and slow the enemy and it's so much more powerful in Jinnar because his 3 is a dive ability you you go to 80% movement speed so you can dive them and then use your 2 to slow them it's extremely powerful and if you haven't tried Jinnar you should try him you will melt the opposing team uh, it's just, I think right now people are still use, learning to use how to play him. 
learning to <laughs> use how to play him. That's not a correct sentence. <laughs> Getting used to how to play. I am actually seeing him picked now. Yes. So some people have noticed. All right. Next we have Zuka. Uh, Zuka, he got burfed <laughs> because they missed Tencent missed two patches, so he got buffed and then kind of tweaked. Uh, so overall mm. buffed, but he was buffed before that as well, so he was already kind of trending up, and he just does disgusting damage. Right? Oh yeah, like he's like Nakroth, but not as stupid hard to play. I mean, when I play as Max, he is literally the hero I fear the most. The most. I can deal with... I've played against Omens, I've played against Supermen, I've played against Diomas, I've played against what have you. And all of them should beat Max, but I main him so I know exactly how to play with him and around their abilities. Zuka's the one person who just... I have to run away. <laughs> it's like, mm. he just completely just destroys anyone he comes across and... You know, it, it can't just be me, right? Yes, it's got. If you're against Azuka, if Azuka's skilled, you're against him in the DS lane, you're going to die, or you're going to be. Oh yeah, and tower. he's so hard to catch up to. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else to say about Zuka? He's just really good. No, oh, he's really good. Kind of fragile though, so you, you got to be good to play him. Hit him with CC, and he's done. But. It can be hard since well, very few heroes um, have guaranteed you, CC. You kind of have to chain CC, because if you hit him with one CC and don't completely kill him, he'll run away with, like, one health. Because <laughs> he has mm. a billion dashes in a row. But, yeah. Yeah, every he's, like, I believe every single one of his abilities is a movement ability. Well, his one... his and one he can use twice. Right, exactly. All right. Raz, Raz is funny, because... <laughs> the only reason we moved him down in the first place is because he was hard to use. And mm. at the time, Tulin, L'Oreal, uh, well, L'Oreal, we moved Liliana. Liliana, but Liliana Flash were as powerful, but easier to use. So there's no one really, there's no reason to play Raz. But Ever since Me Marks completely just owned Fools at the AWC, people have been picking him a lot more, especially in pro tournaments. And yeah, it turns out he's really good. And they fixed what I didn't even realize a bug he had yeah. on his fire. energy cert, the Hadoken. His fire. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To where it takes away some in enemy magic resist. So he got soft and buffed in amongst that. Right. It used to it used to act just like Rourke, except that you typically didn't have more magic damage on your team, so it made no sense for your own fireballs to not work, for your own uh, mm. abilities to not work with the magic resistance, right? Or the magic defense right. reduction. Um, so they fixed that, so now he does more damage that way. He, they also buffed his auto attacks. You used to have to auto attack three twice in order to have a third auto attack that's kind oh, of like oh, a, yeah. a pushback and magic damage. So now his first auto attack is like an extra ability, right? So he can he pushes back and does magic damage, which is with his first attack. So that's extremely strong. And now you can basically triple push back because you can auto attack, use your one and your three. It's pretty insane. Absolutely. And he's fun to play, which helps. Fun to play if you're good at him. I just kind of sit back and fireball people because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Scud, Scud, uh, we always had him pretty high, honestly. We always had him like tier two, and no one never no used him. Um, we, I think it's after not... we noticed him, it took us a while too. <laughs> no, no, but we, but we were always saying he was decent, you know, back like we five. Said he was good with a team. Yeah, like five tier lists ago, people didn't have Scud very high, and no one ever played him. Mm. So I'm going to give a source a pat in the back for that one. But yeah, he really mm. rose up the ranks and went from 2 to 1 to now S. And um, yeah, did a lot of damage. After Zuka, Scud's the second most... Uh, the Scud is the second most feared for me as a max main, because he just kind of kills you. Oh yeah, he'll fist you in the face and you're gone. <laughs> All right, that is tier S, whopping 25 heroes. Let's go on to Alice, heading off tier one. Now, Alice, we had her in S. We never have 
in S? I think she. Mm, I th- she's been in S. I think she's gone from S to one to two, then one again. And I think she's been in one since then. Right, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's not a lot of congruity between pro play and ladder play, because people on ladder, it's hard to have a coordinated team. Nowadays, people are more coordinated. Uh, if she continues being really good on ladder and on pros, we might move her up. But for now, we don't really see a ton of um, great success with Alice on ladder. Or not overwhelming success, like tier S heroes, I should say. Mm. Uh, just because, again, people still need to get better playing as a team. Yeah, And people just generally don't like supports, so she doesn't get picked a lot. Right. But we do have the hashtag on her, which means that, yes, if you play as a team, she is definitely tier S. So don't you right. guys worry. Hashtag. Take hours. <laughs> L'Oreal, L'Oreal's funny because she, ne- she never got actually nerfed, but she went from SS to S to now 1, just because the meta game switched to being a very fast-paced meta, and she's a very late-game hero. But if you're in, I would say, like, Diamond and below, like, even Diamond games, she's still great. Because I don't; those games don't last as quickly as pro games. I don't. I think people are looking to pro games too too much to uh, mimic in their mm. ladder games. And I mean, on ladder, you're not going to finish the game in 12 minutes like they do in the pros. So L'Oreal probably oh, yeah. be okay. Yeah, and that's her main weakness: is she needs items to really shine. She needs the CDR from the Aegis and the health regeneration from Rhea's blessing to be able to slap fools around with her angel wings. I guess to go back on what I literally just said, uh, people do like to surrender a lot. So you get done like one kill, you're like, oh, the game's over. So Hashtag don't surrender, fools. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, next Thane. Uh, not a lot to say about Thane. He's just always been good, not great. He's yeah. under the best supports, but oh, right. always been just great at peeling for his team, getting his King's Glory in. He's fine. Mm. Is the same problem as like Alice, to where if he's alone, he's not really doing anything oh, yeah. except watching <laughs> his teammates with tears in his eyes. There, okay. There's a reason why I only have one. I, we have the Tilda, which I mentioned before, is you're way worse in other roles, and I didn't even put a second role for him because do not play him in the DS light. I know I've seen people in gold do it. <laughs> do not. You will get completely trashed. <laughs> he can't do anything. Exactly. He He's, needs to be setting things up. I know he looks. <laughs> I know he looks like Arthur, but they're not the same person. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next, Tara. Uh, Tara, we had in tier two because we're like, yeah, she's easily counterable with Curse of Death and Tome of the Reaper. But then we realized, like, what DS laner would pick Curse of Death and Tome of the Reaper? And even if you know, it would have to be someone first of all who could find that item useful, like the opposing mage or marksman, and then they'd have to come into contact with that person often. Not to mention yeah. that uh, interrupting their build, even though they have reasonable stats, they're not as good as you know some other stats, some other items. So, since obviously it's a, a tech item. But, um, yeah. And just... it doesn't help that Curse of Death and Tome of the Reaper are really bad when it comes to stats. Yeah, exactly. So, we're like, and, and she was just, like, so annoying in the, the DS lane. She never freaking dies. In, in team fight, she does a lot of damage without dying as well. So, yeah, we moved her up. <clears throat> I guess not much yeah. else to say. We yeah. do have a lot to say about Arthur, though, because we we, we're always defending Arthur in this tier. <laughs> we get someone getting mad at us about Arthur every single time. Every time people have something to say about our spiky-haired wonder knight. <laughs> The thing about Arthur is that you're not going to see him in pro matches because he is not as good as other DS laners. And even someone like Irie or like Tara in the same tier as him, they're going to synergize with their team a bit better than Arthur is in in coordinated matches. So, I mean, we could put a hashtag on Irie and Tara, but it's more... It's more... Um, apt or more like you know correct to put like an anti-hashtag in arthur it's like he doesn't with a perfect team coordination he's not as good as some of the other heroes that said he just runs around the map really really quickly and he's kind of like a pseudo superman that way and you're not going to get a perfect team court um 
composition in most games. So Arthur's really good for filling the place. Yeah. He's tanky. He can do damage. He's mobile. He, he likes to scream about his order. <laughs> for the new dawn. <laughs> Is what Arthur says when they get the DS, when they get the dark skin. And then at least half of his skin, he's a spooky skeleton. <laughs> What's not the love? Oh, that's great. I, I just love when he's just like, for honor, or like just like normal voice lines. And then he just goes full, just angry and just, <laughs> for the new dawn. It's like, Arthur, calm down, man. <laughs> it's okay. I will slay you and man controlling that. <laughs> All right, next, Irie. Uh, Irie. We've always had her in tier one. She's kind of been stuck there for forever because she's never been particularly great or bad. But she's been seeing a lot more play in pro matches as people have caught mm. on to her. So, again, don't want to overreact to a few matches here. But, you know, gotta say, people have been asking a lot, like, is Irie really that good? Like, no, trust me, she's good. And then now it's kind of swung the other way where it's like, hmm, Irie's really good. Hmm. I've been playing with her a bit more recently, and she is quite good. She has her problems, but I still would say that people like Lubu or, um, let's say, Kilgroth, while not that might not be the best comparison, but this one I'm going to use, um, while they might not necessarily have a higher like potential than Irie, they are much easier to get there than Irie is and don't require quite as much upkeep. Right. The one thing I've seen, though, in pro matches and in games which we in which one side has a very good Irie is that she will get some surprise kills on the DS laner because they're not used to the person, the opposing laner being that fast. Right? They're like, mm. oh, we're good. We're trading damage. Okay, time, to, time for me to run away because I'm a bit low. And then Irie just chases you down and kills you. You're like, oh, that's right. <laughs> she can do that. You weren't expecting a ninja. <laughs> All right. Morin is in um, an interesting situation because he takes a while to ramp up to his power. We still have him here because if he does ramp up to his power, much like L'Oreal, he's extremely good. Uh, the problem is he's in the jungle, so you kind of have to just bide your time for a long time before that happens. But if he makes it there, he is devastating. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm a bit biased after watching the end of the Valor tournament and, <laughs> or Valor series. And who was it? What's his name? Rocker. I'm not good at Rocker, just absolutely spanking everyone with Moron. Yeah, we get the feeling that people would respect more and more if Rocker was able to make the AWC and didn't have military service and was replaced by Pew. Because I think that him showing off Moron and completely crushing the world stage with it. Would have been uh, pretty influential. Influential. So. What a selfish person going and serving his country. <laughs> All right, next, Crickneck. They buffed him. They buffed his additional damage, so you. It's not like he gets extra damage automatically. You still need to build into attacking items in order to take advantage of mm. those buffs. But that said, it makes it so that he's ridiculously lethal now. You just white people out oh yeah they do way more i've been caught off guard by it several times and just how much more damage his abilities do now yeah so that's basically it uh we still we still feel that he's weaker than say a zephyr because zephyr can do multiple things well like tank and have cc Kraknek doesn't have cc really he just kills people really quick and can get out potentially but to, it's like a one to two second window where you can kill him because his 2 is <clears> off cooldown. If you have to use your 2 to chase someone down, then you're probably going to die. But other than that, he might be able to get away. <clears throat> Alright, Crest. Crest got a buff. A really nice buff. Uh, because if anyone had used Crest before, they know exactly how frustrating it is to build up Rage. You had to build Rage before by just auto-attacking, and you're a support. You're literally not supposed to auto-attack. You're supposed to stay away from the minion waves and let your teammates mm -hmm. and let your teammates farm them. So it's like it goes directly against what you're supposed to do as far as how his ult was supposed to be built up. Yeah, that was an interesting design choice. So now it's much easier, so he's much better because his ult is extremely strong. Oh, yeah. He can get up to Big Daddy crest form more and show people why he holds the trident on the team. <laughs> Alright, Zilla got a buff. Uh, we He's 
you know, noticeably better, but we weren't quite ready to put him in tier S quite yet. Again, not overreacting to the state of the game right now, but we are looking closely at him. Uh, the problem with him is he's one of the more difficult heroes to play, similar to Raz. His the being able to teleport twice is kind of difficult to pull off on him. Um, I mean, you can do it once to jump to someone, but or to, to have it reset when you're in the middle of a fight, but being able to use it to once again jump away is difficult, whereas someone like Flash can just press a button and they're gone. So mm. and That's the issue. And that is something we have to think about when putting heroes on the list, is how easy it is for them to hit their potential compared to other heroes, while it's less apt now, but for a while it was well... Zell is like Murad, but harder. Right. Well, kind of. I think the thing is, like, Murad and Flash are, like, both dive and poke characters. Whereas Zill mm. is almost strictly dive. Unless you're extremely good with him, and you can get the reset off again and teleport away again. But that's really hard mm. to do. So, yeah. <laughs> that's basically it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Pareda is interesting. He does a ton of damage, but you have to be really good at playing him because you need to have good uh, positioning. If, if people don't know, you can see the lines if you're not in the bush, but if you're in the bush, they cannot see the lines of his first ability. Um, so you need to have good positioning for that. Also, when he uses his ult, he's using auto attacks, and it's actually sh much harder than you would imagine using um, all of his abilities. Like, using one cycle of your abilities and ulting, then using it again and aiming it properly, and then potentially, quote-unquote, canceling it so that it goes off to hit people, and also, you know, gas-bombing them into your thing. It's it's harder than you might think. So, Preta, again, very powerful, lots of damage, but difficult to play. Mm. And here's the problem of that Raz saw before. Of, He's good, but why would you pick him when there's so many other mages who are good and easy? Right. Preda was the go-to previously for the um, the long-range poke mage for a lot of um, pro matches. So you still see him play today because they haven't you know transitioned to Kali or Kuxi, who are a little a little bit better at uh, being pokey. But um, yeah, it used to be the top three mages, and then if they couldn't pick those, they picked Preda because if they couldn't have those top three, they'd rather have someone who can easily clear waves from a distance. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> next, Pira slash Pena, and if you were on some of the Southeast Asia servers, her buff two or three was insane. Oh, yeah, For being able reasons. to move while using it is huge. Huge! And like we mentioned, the fact that she can move with it means that she can't get stunned out of it through crowd control. Oh, yeah, that is really big. And both that and not having the chance to miss are really good on her, um, both in staying alive, catching people in it, keep making sure that your allies can do their stuff without worrying about your own um, area, just all around. She's been much, much better. Right, because before, even though... So they, they did nerf the radius and the damage, but the thing is, beforehand, you had to just... You know, if you wanted to use it offensively, you needed to like literally run into the opposing team and use it. And by doing so, they immediately were able to just stun you. And you know, not to mention you were just extremely vulnerable. And the other thing was running away. You couldn't run away while using it. So now she's better at using it both offensively and defensively, which is absolutely huge. And the funniest thing is when they stun you and you stun them right back because you're still using it. It's just, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous to witness. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, and also it's it's kind of funny because she's one of the only healers uh, in the game, as far as just being able to. Um, is she the only healer in the game? I can't think of the, another one. Um, uh, Gonga can heal. Oh right, right, right yeah, Gonga. But yeah, she heals a ton. So it's such a weird feeling playing with Pira, or you know, playing with up here or playing as Pira, because it's like, wait a second, we could just continue this fight. We don't have to go back at all. Because it's just not, keep going. <laughs> it's not like Alice, where you have shields. You literally are healing back to full health, so it's pretty nice. And it can be really nice in later fights when usually you'd have to stop going for towers because 
the enemy's about to respawn, and you don't want to be out there fighting towers when they come to get their revenge. Being able to heal your friends does a lot to help, especially with the new, like, the water line items, which will give her some additional heal and allow her to restore mana. Yeah, ha having mana is the biggest thing, because otherwise she never needs to really go back to base. Hmm. Okay, Chognar, he has been in favor lately. <laughs> the funniest thing is, Team Korea, the world champions, they played him in the DS lane, which is very bizarre, but it made sense if you think about it, because Sun, their DS laner, was extremely aggressive, and mm. he would get caught out a lot, and then Chognar just never dies. <laughs> if, you, if you play him, if you hold his ult, you cannot kill him because you can't CC him ever. So you can't, it's really hard to kill him because he's tanky enough that you need to, you know, you need to hold him down in order to kill him, which is true for most tanks. So, mm. you know, it's kind of funny to see that, but he's been, he's always been like up and down, you know, kind of uh, fluctuating between tier S and 1, and then, you know, other people's minds as well, being like top, top tier or just top tier. Recently, he's been back up to top, top tier, but uh, again, we don't really want to overreact Especially if you guys on ladder, it doesn't have quite the same effectiveness. Mm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. You you covered pretty much everything. Okay. Uh, Grack. So Grack, we moved up just because it's hard to ignore how popular he is in the pro scene, particularly Thailand. They still love him, even though he isn't. He fell off a little bit in the other regions. I don't think I see Taiwan using him anymore. But, um, yeah, you if you play him every single game like they apparently do on the Thailand server, he's really good. Yeah, if you get good with those hooks, he can be a nightmare. The recent addition of a mute to his Earthquake, I think it's called, um, is really nice. Even though they nerfed the effects of mute, or technically, they, I think they fix the effect of mute because it would interrupt auto attacks as well previously. Um, but even without that, if you can get one or two heroes in World Devourer, that's a 2.5 second disable that I don't believe resistance can get you out of because it's just constantly reapplying the disable. So that gives your team a lot of time to absolutely punish you for getting hit by a Grack hook or a Grack breath, I guess. And there's also multiple reasons why having a team that knows how to play with Grack is important. Because first of all, if you can damage heroes, it makes hooking them much easier. A hooking a, run a target that's running away is way, way easier because they can't really juke. Because if they run sideways, they, get, they take more damage uh, from, mm. from the person next to you. Uh, and also having someone there to follow up on the hook, you know, maybe having the second stun on them, for instance. And also... Forcing people, kind of funneling people into the world of our, like if you're sieging a tower, you can make it so that they have to run in specific direction towards Grack in order to clear the wave or kill someone, and then they get hit by the world of our and they're all dead. So it's not just Grack, it's the team around Grack that needs to play with him properly. Right. You can also be nice when roaming because you can force uh, jungle monsters to reset. So if you walk up and you see, sorry, I'm talking about the thick boys, pray so much. Um, you walk up and you see someone trying to get the red buff, you can snag that red buff with your big old monster chain and force it to help heal itself, slowing the jungler down. Yep. Not to mention his chain strangely does the most damage of all his abilities, so you can like maybe steal an epic monster or something. <laughs> but uh, mm. I just I laughed because it's true, he typically play him roaming like that. And that means that you play him with Hermes Select almost always. And it's just funny seeing this massive creature just like sprinting across. It's like, what is going on? I really want them to change it so that if he gets over like 600 movement speed, he'll just start rolling down the field. <laughs> so much good. So much better. Oh my god. Alright, well, Crixie, we contemplated moving her up to tier S, but we're stubborn. We don't like flavor of the month, even though it's flavor of three months for, at this point. But uh, we're just stubborn, and she got a slight nerf. Um, but yeah, uh, we don't think she's quite as good as the the mages in tier S. Yeah, she's she has a lot of damage, but that's kind of all she has. 
she has damage from she has a lot of damage from a long range, which is a big deal. And they're yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're relatively. I'm low, not low trying range. to undersell. She has a lot of damage. Um, also, they buffed her moonfall like two patches ago, which I mean, by they buffed the cooldown, so now it's a super low cooldown. I mean, now mm. it hasn't uh, now as of like you know March or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's. We're looking at her. We, we might move her to tier S yeah. next tier list. Uh, the thing is, right now, we feel like she can still be caught um, if people are kind of focusing her down. I might be a little bit biased because when I see Crixie as a max, I'm like, oh, that's a target. But, um, yeah. it's if, you have, if people have more dive comps, which I guess is not the flavor of the month right now, then she's going to be easily caught. I, I, I guess that maybe that's it. We've kind of talked ourselves into the reason why people love her, right? It's because it's, yeah. all, it's all poke comps. It's all protect the ADC. And in that sort of comp, you can't really catch Crixie, and she just she's the second protection target on your team. Right, right. And she's definitely good at poking. Yeah. We'll see. We might move her up to tier S next time. All right. <clears throat> Slims. Speaking of pokers. Yeah. Slims. Uh, Slims and Fennec. We were both like, I guess we got to move them up. We we can we the pro scene and you know a lot of picks and ladders forced her hand. We're not the highest on these two, but. They do a lot of damage. I'm finally starting to see better Slims in the game. Like, mm. before, people were like, Slims can do so much damage. Uh, and on paper, it makes sense. But I would never see a good Slims in game. So I'm like, well, I guess I just trust the everyone then. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until recently that he's been starting to really pick up, at least in games that I've been playing. And the um, focus on jungling marksman makes him an even more obvious choice right that's what i was going to say is that both slims and fennec who are i guess we're going to <clears throat> group together here is they just fit they're both capable of jungling very quickly which is important if you want to have a jungling marksman and since everyone's used to protecting the jungler he's a very nice pick if you miss out on lindas and violet and whatnot mm. and they're both rather mobile for marksman their uh slims is leap of vitality and phoenix rolling lightning i'm always struggling <laughs> so hard for these names um are very good uh self peels um so that they can get out of danger if it comes when they're off on their own gives them more roaming potential and it takes some of the burden of protecting them off of the team Right. The, the biggest problem we had with these heroes, actually, is that those two abilities, they kind of stop after they use them. So mm. that made them not the best escape, but yeah, they're good enough. Yeah, again, yeah, we, it's we not like Violet <clears throat> takes a step after she rolls. Yeah, and and moves faster. But no, they nerfed that, uh, to be fair. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, they did. Uh, but again, it's because people are used to protecting the carry, and it just seems so much harder to get to them because there's these like walls of heroes in the way. <laughs> it's like I'm getting hit by the slims, but I can't get to him. Um, Fennec, we should at least talk about him a little bit <clears throat> to distinguish from slims. He is oh, worse. Boy. He is worse in the late game, but better in the early game. He just completely and utterly demolishes towers. Now that oh, Rourke... he's so good early game. Yeah, now that Rourke is out of the game, uh, he is the fastest at killing towers by far he just immediately just gone and he can you know solo the abyssal early it's just if you don't keep track of him he will just kill all your build all your buildings and if you fall behind and like kills and whatnot the game is just like over in a flash mm. his ultimate works as a good area denial as well because if people stand in that they're going to get thieves marks really fast and then explode in a big visceral mess yeah, the funny thing, his ult buffs damage for your entire team, too, so you don't want to be standing in that. Mm. Okay, our favorite hero of the Superman. Least favorite hero in the game. <laughs> so, Valine is kind of funny because he has a billion builds. His latest build is... And one... they're all bad. <laughs> all but one are bad. Don't pick Valheim unless you pick this one build. <laughs> I see you out there. You want to be like, oh, I'm going to pick... Devil's handshake because Valheim. No, <laughs> stop it. Don't do it. Actually, it's like, while you're doing it. You just gave me ideas. I'm like, Devil's handshake. He, he does get 10% per attack. <laughs> hey, no, stop it. Yeah, so. You're stoking a to, bad fire. <laughs> to be fair, the build, quote unquote, is only three items. So you can kind of do what you want after that. Uh, they, 
you know, you have to get Blitzblade, Frostcape, and Hyoga's Edge for the extreme attack speed that Blitzblade gives you, which is 30. They buffed Blitzblade's stats and and lowered its costs. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, and buffed its passive. <laughs> it's insane. Like, yeah, the passive is insane too. Like, everything about it is just better, and they like, made it cheaper. It's kind of bizarre. Um, so, yeah, very, very quick attack. It does magic damage with it. And to combine those two things is having a bunch of slows with Frostcape and Hyoga's Edge. So you slow them down, which gives you more chances to hit your RNG second stun, or just your second stun if it comes off cooldown. And, yeah. He, he basically kites people into Oblivion. He plays in the DS lane. Very, hard, very very hard to deal with. Constantly banned in Taiwan and Thailand, but we are not going to put him in tier S quite yet. We moved him from no. 3 to 1. Okay, so... <laughs> but we're not going to put him in TS quite yet. And... And if you pick AD items on him, I will find you. Don't do it. <laughs> AP is okay. We'll, we'll accept AP. But... AP will work. Boomstick's pretty good on this boy. <laughs> but yeah, I think part of the reason why he's being banned so much in those leagues, though, is because they, they really want to play Arm and Roxy, and that kind of messes with that, because they're extremely weak to, to Valheim. That's true. That's true. And there are a lot of top-tier heroes that hate his guaranteed stun, We've talked about this before, and that some heroes are really good because their main counter was Valheim and Vera. Right. No one pick, well, everyone picks Valheim, but they're going to lose. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that said, there was a... I saw a game by Simjo uh, who had a hybrid build. He had Blitzblade, Frostcape, Hyogazic, and uh, Zweihander. And he also, also built like AP Arcana, which was very, very interesting. Hmm. I can see that, especially with Magic Pierce, since Blitzblade adds some magic damage and all of his abilities do magic damage. All right, we actually got to finish in 20 minutes because I had to record a podcast with TJ. So... Oh, man, let's go. <laughs> that is the oh, Tower... Batman. Man of... <laughs> By the way, Tower Dive Podcast, subscribe to that. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, Batman. Uh, he's still really good. He can... I mean, being able to stealth for a long, long time and kill people really quickly is nice. He's kind of like a weaker version of, you know, of Fennec in that... You could snowball the game, but uh, Phoenix snowballs just snowballs it harder. So, yeah. Mm. All right, moving Sounds on. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Marja, Marja, she's being banned, ah, and okay, we moved her from three to two, which technically puts her in competitive viability. But she's being banned and picked in, first of all, like in Thailand a lot, but a little bit in Taiwan as well, particularly because Team SMG likes her. Uh, we, again, we're not going to overreact, and we're not ready to put her in tier S all of a sudden, but, uh, part of the reason why she's so much better is not just because, you know, having a lot of damage on her 3 is a really big deal, but also because Barris Ag Agony helped her the most out of any hero. Uh, she does a lot of, you know, slow burn damage, and that just helps her even more, having Barris Agony. Mm. Uh, yes, and she has, I've played against her, and she's much better. I think part of what makes her seem stronger now is no one played her before, so now that people can play her, no one knows how to play against her. Exactly. Um, so people who know her and struggled through her in the weenie days, as I call them, <laughs> of Marge's life, lifetime, uh, are able to have a lot of success when she feels like a new hero to everyone who ignored her before. Yeah, the, the bigger thing as well is that she is in a solo lane now. They don't play her in mid anymore, they play her in, in the uh, DS lane. And that means she just has to go one-on-one -on -one versus the other hero, and if she wins that, she's a good mm. hero. So there's not a lot less com complexity, a lot less need to be the main damage dealer on the team if you're on the team, if you're in that side lane. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Alright. Next, Arduin, we moved him up after, you know, community pressure. <laughs> Although, you, you were always an advocate of moving him up. I was kind of the one... Being like, no, he's bad. Yeah, I like, especially after his passive got changed. I thought that he is much better. Um, I've seen several people do well with him. Uh, I haven't used him much myself, but I, I think he's about the same as Astrid right now, except while Astrid does more damage, Arduin does more control. Um, his rend mm. can stun large uh, people. Well, I'm. Uh, no, no, no. His abilities are all really short. So I can't remember which word. I can't be like, oh, that's the really... Let's pick a card, any card, because I had to yeah. write that five million times. Yeah. Um, 
Rend can stun lots of people and is a relatively short cooldown. And his ultimate both lets him move a bit, which is something he suffered from, and stuns people as well. And so he can be a big help in team fights, even if he's not the best on his own. My biggest issue with him was that if you learn how to play against him, he's a lot worse. So once he uses Undying Protector, which, which is his shield, he does true damage and it reduces the cooldown on his ultimate. Just run away when he does that. Just don't even deal with him. And not to mention he has his freaking shield, so don't even attack him. And then also when he gets below 50%, his passive goes off, so just, which is uh, Bloodlust. Do not deal with him then either, and you're good. You're Gucci. <laughs> So yeah. people don't realize that and they just die because they're just like, how am I dying? I didn't realize he did so much damage. It's like, yes, because right. you're standing in his true damage. All right, moving on. That's why he's here too. <laughs> exactly. Diao Chan. Uh, she's pretty oh, much the same. Old gravel voice herself. <laughs> Green <laughs> slash Cody hates her voice. <laughs> anyway, um, she's still fine. She's like, having a second, you know, freeze is amazing, but you can't always hit people with it, especially because you... I mean, there's a fair number of Diao Chans in the letter, enough so that people have figured out how she plays, the, you know, the combo. It's mm. like, oh, I need to stay away enough so that she can't one into two me. If she ones me, I can maybe juke the opposite way to where she thinks I might go for to hit the two. And, yeah, and the problem is, like, as long as you dodge her, those attacks, she's dead because she's not mobile. Mm. That said, she still is capable. A good player will be able to land her abilities, and she can c contribute to team fights. She's at least better than earlier in the year that um, if you saw her, you'd be like, oh, Christ, this game isn't going to go too well. It's like, oh, well, at least I'm not playing her. All right, well, next up is Kali, who we've considered moving to Tier 1 because she is occasionally played, but she's uh, in, in Pro Leagues, I should say. But part of, it that, part of that's because she's very, you know, specific in her role. She's very pokey, so you need to have a team built around her. Um, and... She's very good at what she does. She clears away extremely quickly. Uh, she got a, uh, an indirect nerf because she used to be able to just clear minion waves and defend for forever at the base. But now there's a Drake that just kills your towers. So that's not as, as viable as before. Um, mm. The biggest problem with her is that her ult it can be very, very powerful if they're not paying attention. But if they are, you just dodge it and it does nothing. Yeah. And it's not the hardest to dodge, really. Right. The funny thing is, like, I've seen so many games where Kali had the most damage, and she has, like, the highest score on the team, like, zero deaths, a billion damage, and I know she didn't affect the game at all, because it's just empty stats, mm -hmm. which is the problem. Uh, Natalia, Natalia is uh, very controversial as well. People seem to love her recently, but still the same problems as before, very immobile, uh, but does a gajillion damage if she if you can set her up and hit her abilities which is easier granted because her two and her one are faster now yeah and she can spam her one if it hits yeah. i've seen at least a video of people being able to shoot that one up over and over and over again because at max cdr and hitting and gets down to 0.6 seconds well the funny thing is like we shouldn't even be telling you to to dodge natalia's one because it hurts a lot so no, yeah. Dodge her one. It's strong. All of her abilities do stupid damage. Don't let them hit you. Yeah, exactly. All right, Emily, we had uh, we were back and forth on this one, or at least I was back and forth on this one. She's kind of like Xanus. People have been giving her like comparisons to this year and that here. She's very, very similar to Xanus, except she's more mobile, um, and she has better sustain. But her ult has extremely long cooldown, whereas Xanus is like super short. Um, and we think that she's really, really hard to play. She has, she has difficulty rating of 3 because, I mean, her abilities are easy. You just point and click. But synergizing all those abilities is very hard. And she has a kind of conflicting... She has a passive on her 2, which is strange. And that kind of conflicts with her first passive, at least in playstyle. Because her first passive says, attack one hero. The other one says, roam around the map. So it's like, yeah, and yeah, you could you know go around and kind of pick up one hero at a time. But it's just weird because one, one part of her... Kit says jungle, one part of her kit says DS lane. And mm. uh, I think that I think that people aren't even close to figuring her, her out yet. But we're putting it at two. She seems like re reasonably strong. Um, I think she is going to move up before she moves down. Probably. I, like, <clears throat> I tested her out some today, and I was liking what I felt. But it is a bit odd. Also, by the way, just public service and PSA. Uh, her 
ult, it says reduces 80 damage, or immunity to 80 damage. That's immunity to every single incoming attack, tower, you know, ability, item aura, etc. It, when you read it, it like, which is what I thought too, when you read it, you think, what? It just blocks 80 damage, period? That's so bad. But it blocks 80 from, like, everything. So it's basically, it's similar to Xanus' uh, Dragon's Wrath. Xanus' Dragon's Wrath um, blocks 20% of each attack. So if an attack, if an incoming attack is 400 after accounting for armor and stuff like that, it's the exact same thing as his Dragon's Wrath. Which means it's mm. slightly better than his, because there's a lot more, like, auras and stuff that are, like, way less than that. Especially with text speed heroes, like our favorite hat wearing demon hunter. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, go and like her ult's really strong. Uh, so try not to fight unless you have your ult, especially if you're going into a team fight. Necroth, we've talked about this a lot. He's really, really good if you're Vex. Really, really bad if you're not. Um, yeah. So if you want to play Necroth, just practice a lot. <laughs> Be Vex. Exactly. Uh, Ormar. <clears throat> Ormar, we bumped him down a tier because of the metagame right now. He's a very good dive hero, but the current meta is poke slash protect the carry, which he is not. Yeah. And I like Ormar. I didn't... It broke my heart to lower him, but <laughs> he's not great at keeping friends safe. He's more great at jumping into battles and just shouting bl bloody murder at people. The problem as well is he's getting upstaged by other heroes like Crash 2 moved up, so it's just like... Mm. Yeah. This is true. Alright, Astrid, Astrid is good, she's just not as good as the other DS laners, that's basically... Yeah, it. it's a shame, because she is good, it's just there's so many other picks that are better than her. Yeah. And I say this as someone who really likes Astrid. Yep, that's pretty much it. Although her, her <laughs> if you don't know how to play against Astrid, she can really wreck you, because you'll dive her, like five people will dive her, she uses her ult, she's invulnerable for a long time, and then... Everyone's stuck, either trying to run away, or they take her damage from her ult, and then the rest of the team comes in and kills them. <laughs> you can really bait people with Astrid. Oh yeah, she's really good at flipping fights. Alright, uh, Butterfly a lot better after the... Uh, two patches ago? Three patches ago? Um, uh, yeah. She's, uh -huh. a lot, she's a lot more like balanced in... Um, and not... By that, I don't mean she was overpowered or underpowered. I mean, she's not so... Snowbally, right? It used to be if she got yeah. a kill, she's like, please, 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 just one kill, just one, just give me that kill, just like a freaking heroin addict, just one kill. And then she kills the entire team afterward, right? If she doesn't get mm -hmm. the one kill, she dies, and then you know she overextended the entire team dies. Where now she gets that little bit of healing. Uh, she actually has you know some mobility after she uses, she uses her one, I believe it is, and mm -hmm. so it's just more balanced. Like it makes more sense, right? She's not completely snowbally, and she's not completely dead in the water if she doesn't get that first kill. She's less of a pub stomp in that people can use her at higher tiers now and not be like, oh, groan. All right, next, uh, Mina. Mina has actually been been seeing a lot of play lately. I was kind of surprised. I was expecting more Grack, and then people were switching to Mina, which I am in support of, actually. Uh, uh, I like Mina better than Grack, personally. Right. We've, um, you know, sometimes we're, we're slaves to the community. <laughs> so we saw Mina too. Uh, right before we made this tier list, she we saw her that she's been playing a lot in the pro leagues. We might move her up, but again, it's kind of the same thing as Grax, kind of the same thing as Lumber below her, in that it all relies on a good team. If she has a bad team, she's going to be a terrible hero. If she has a good team, she's going to be an amazing hero. Mm. Yes. Too many times I've gone in as Mina and have people go, oh crap! It's 3v... He's going in 3v1, even though there are two of them, and if they join me, it'd be 3v3, but whatever, um, and run away. And then Mina's dead, and everyone's sad, especially me. Yeah, her pull is, like, extremely strong, as, so, as well as Dark Dominion, so... Mm. Anyway, uh, moving on. Lumber, Lumber kind of hard to use. Uh, it says so in his description. The problem is his uh, charge, which both stuns and gives shields, so it's kind of hard to do which situation to use it in, how to use it. Um, mm. And also, you always need to be near someone. So again, he is hashtag support hashtag. You need to be with your freaking lumber, because otherwise you don't get your passive. His passive literally depends on being near people. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. I always feel like his stats are rather low. Or well, that's the point, because his passive, his passive boosts both his magic defense and his armor, so they're good once you get near someone, but yeah. Otherwise, mm. he's very vulnerable. 
Do not leave him alone in the lane like you do with Alice and Pura. <laughs> they will all be sad. <laughs> okay, Wisp and Yorn, we were debating. I thought I sh we should... I thought that uh, we should move them down. You said they're fine here. They do a lot of damage, and they have... They both are capable of AoE critting, which is really good. Mm. But they're also not marksman junglers, which means that the meta has kind of passed them by. And also, they're very immobile. Wisp does have a dash, but she needs her dash to do the damage in the first place. That's true. I think that their damage makes up for their immobility enough that if the team is playing in the current protect the carry mindset, both can do fairly well, um, especially now that people are thinking about protecting them. Uh, Yorn, I think, has one of the highest DPS potentials in the game. Um at least consistently, rather than um, bursting. Uh, I know less about Wisp, but especially recently, I've seen more people playing her and doing rather well, actually, even if her abilities are a bit wonky. Like, her dash is tied to her damage, so you're stuck having to either use it to engage to do damage or save it as an escape. And her two has her barrel bomb has so hard to wind up if you're not used to it. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I had to message TJ, and I, don't, I want to do this video one take, so I <laughs> didn't want to didn't want to edit this. Sorry for people who are watching this, but uh, we're we're one take, guys. Anyway, <clears throat> are we moving on? Yes. All right. Uh, Wukong, Wukong, um, he's a pub sub, you like to say. Mm -hmm. He kills people at low ranks because he does a lot of damage. Well, it's based on RNG. He's really reliant on getting crits. And if he does, he kills people very quickly. If he doesn't, he's kind of screwed. Um, he's also someone who needs to snowball the game because he's not very good in the light game. He's very squishy. Uh, despite the fact mm. that a few patches ago they buffed it so that he could dash away after he uses his ult. But um, yeah, just not only do people not like asset assassins now, but he's kind of conditionally a good early game assassin. Like he maybe can snowball the game if he gets good RNG. Yeah, if he is able to crit, he does damage. If not, ooh, boy. But yeah, this is, like we mentioned, he will be better at lower ranks. So if you're in, I would say, plat or above, even, you know, high gold, start thinking about moving on to other assassins. <clears throat> even Batman might be a better choice and has similar playstyle. Well, I mean, they're in the same tier, so that's what I'm saying. So yeah, if you want to be consistent, play Batman. If you want to be RNG favorite, RNG reliant, then play Wukong, I suppose. <laughs> All right, uh, Maganga. Maganga is just kind of like in this weird spot where he's immobile. He can duel really well. If you don't know how to play against him, he just duels the crap out of you and kills you. Uh, if you try to, mm. if you try to like just stay in the lane and fight him in the mid lane, you're going to die. <laughs> so yeah, unless you can just kind of jump him. Like I've, I've killed like Magangas who played in the DS lane before by just jumping them and you know, doing as much damage as possible and executing them, but you cannot stay there very long or else you're going to die. And the worst thing you can do is sit there, take five stacks, and then run away, because that's literally what he wants. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he's really, really durable. So mm. the longer the fight, the worse. But um, that said, you he's, like, zero mobility, so you can just dive him and kill him. That's why he's, like, mm. he has really good spots, but really bad spots at the same time. Yeah, he's good, especially if the enemies are jumping together and he can hit all, a lot of them at once with his abilities. He can just spank the whole entire team. But it requires really good positioning because after someone gets close to him, he has not much going on for him. I think he can benefit a lot from the new um, Barris Agony, though. Depending on how it functions with his poison, I'll have to check that. I don't think it's every ability usage okay uh, the, well, only, the only like exception they... the only exception is like roxy the little fire things that she leaves behind they, those uh cast barris agony passive as well but it has to be every ability usage so you, i don't what if they were standing in his poison cloud every hit that they take re triggers it okay 
So yeah, but his his, I'm very very certain. Actually, I shouldn't say very very certain because I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty sure his auto doesn't proc it because, for instance, like Kali's auto doesn't proc it, and she has like a magic mm -hmm. auto. But uh, maybe it would be weird if his poison proc more poison. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. I gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, the new Barrett is really good. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Let's go to tier three, Ozinka. Uh, I know. <laughs> speaking of speaking of TJ, uh, Ozinka or. I say I was about to say Ozinka loves TJ, but it's the opposite way around. TJ loves Ozinka, but he's just too slow. It's, yeah, he's slow, and his abilities are too hard to hit. If they hit, they're pretty good. Like they do more damage than I thought before, and they're able to stun people well, but they're not reliable enough. Yeah, the, the problem is compare him to some of the heroes in tier two and tier one. Like Natalia, if you hit someone with Natalia's abilities, they are going to die. If you hit someone with your with her two, they're dead. Because <laughs> you just 3-1, they're dead. Or 1-3, sorry, they're dead. Ozinka, you hit someone with his two, it's like... Okay, he gets hurt a little bit. And his maybe your team can run in <laughs> and kill them. Mm -hmm. Also, and co to compare to Crixie, they have you know this big AoE three. But his his three is so much harder to hit than Crixie's. Crixie, you just three in there and, and jump into people's face and they die. His three, even though it's you know, more effective if it does hit. It's just, it's directional. So there's so many times where you're getting jumped on and you're like panic ult and it just goes off in some random direction. You're like, oh. Mm. So yeah, it, it's it's just not a fun time. Moving on. Illumia is, I would say, more consistent as a mage than Asenka, but she's just consistently not great. I've been seeing more people use her. It's still too easy to dodge her abilities. And she's so slow. She's so slow. <laughs> the, she's so slow. Oh my god. Yeah, the, the biggest thing is her ult, right? If you can use mm -hmm. her ult well, that's most of her value. Where, <clears throat> whereas, you know, if you're going to be relying on her 1 and 2, you might as well play L'Oreal. So, yeah, because... Like low cooldown, a stream of damage. It doesn't really make. You're just kind of sitting there using, it, I, like we wrote here. Her second, um, role is a support, right? And that's because she just does a lot of stuns, which doesn't do a lot of damage. And if you build her damage, she's gonna die real quick. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. <clears throat> and she doesn't really have her one is surprisingly long, but not long enough to where she can just poke like Crixie. Yeah, and she has to modify it Pierce, otherwise it stops on minions while Crixie's does not. Yeah, well you can you can prep her her buffed one. Which is what Uh true. Yeah. She really relies on her buffed one, even though her like normal one does decent damage, but it's just like this little boop that goes away. Her buffed one is actually really strong. Just having to prep is really annoying. Yeah. You're getting tired. 71 heroes is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Xanus. Xanus uh, so is really good if you can buff him up. thing is, like, Xanus can actually rip through people. Uh, and, and, you know, he's actually kind of one of those interesting heroes that can, again, as a max main, if I find a Xanus, like, I actually can't fight him. I actually just kind of juke around him and run away. Um, yeah, you've said for a while that you think that people are going to discover Xanus. It's going to take off. Um, okay, the biggest problem with Xanus is he doesn't have, he can't go through walls. That is literally the biggest problem with Xanus. Mm. Because although he just can't do anything. Um, I mean, yeah, there's other heroes who can't go through walls like Rourke, but they have an ult that makes him, like, extremely durable and kill people immediately, whereas Xanus, he takes a few more hits to kill people, and his ult only gives him 20% damage resistance. So he's not, like, in, like unkillable in that state. Mm. Plus, uh, he clears very slowly. This is true. So he's like, if he could, okay, if if Xanus could clear as fast as work, he would be, I dare, I dare say, he'd be like tier one or S. Mm. It's just that, I could yeah. probably agree there, but yeah, he it takes him a long time to get there. My biggest problem is how dependent he is on snowballing to where if the player isn't actively getting kills and assists, they're going to lose. Yeah. 
But if you are against Xanus, do not feed him. You are going to lose the game if you do. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Baldum, we moved down. Uh, we initially put him in Tier 2. And at the time, people were angry at that. But I think people just stopped caring every anymore. Because, like, I think people, when they see a new hero, they play him a lot. And it's fun to play them. And they get some wins here and there. But after the new car sense wears off... It's like, oh yeah, he's not that good. <laughs> you can't hit your three. Your two is your two is pretty good. Uh, your mm. one, you'd rather just have Minas or Grex. It's faster, mm. and if you miss, it's not a big deal. Uh, speaking, of, okay, sorry, Minas two and Grex two. Sorry, yeah, two. Um, yeah. Whereas if Baldum, if he misses his one, he's dead. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, slower and My easier biggest... to miss. My biggest problem is his ultimate, because I've seen way more people save enemies with it than set up kills. Right. Because just making them untargetable, if you don't... It's supposed to be, you can take away the front line, but too many times people use it just, ah, we're in a fight, I need to use my ultimate, and it will throw off the rhythm of the fight and protect the target. Right. Baldum has the potential to move up uh, if people get good at him, but... No one's playing him, so I don't see that happening. <laughs> mm. And there are just so many other better supports and tanks. Right. Yeah. So again, if you could use if he could use his ult properly, but uh it's hard to hit and it would take a lot of practice. Anyway. Yeah. If you but if you see a ball with like a thousand games played, just trust him. He's probably he's probably gonna be a good pick. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, tell if we move down. Uh, she's the victim of the Marksman Jungle meta. She cannot do that. And I put mid as her second, but I also, with that, I also gave her a tilde because do not play her mid because that just completely goes off against her passive. Um, like, she can theoretically clear, but it's just one of the things where she cannot really jungle and, yeah, she's going to have a hard time in the solo lane, and so therefore, rip. I think her passive would make way more sense if it gave her bonus attack when she was not with ally. Oh, that would be sucky though, because then you, because whenever you're in a team fight. Well, if the, your range from people would make it so that it's there, and it would help you farm up to where you're good in team fights anyway. Hmm. True. That'd be interesting. And it would give her more potential to jungle. Because I think she can do okay in the jungle. It's just another one of those. Why would you pick her over all the other jungle? I just feel um, I just wanted to keep her in tier one because every time I see her tell on us on the ladder, I just lick my lips as a max. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> keep picking her. <laughs> well, that's why I don't want to move Valheim up because I know you losers are going to pick it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, Alistair is next. He's a support. That, but his tag is a mage, so if literally his tag was a support, then he'd probably be a lot better on ladder because people would actually play him as a support. Yeah, his ability to set up is really crazy, and he can do some damage, but not enough to take the mage slot. Right. Okay, Ignis. Uh, they poor yeah. Ignis. <laughs> He got a slight buff, but still not great. They keep wanting to make him like a pokey harassy hero, but I don't know why. They have Crixie already. But Crixie does more damage, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem with Ignis, really, is they're like, oh, we don't want to give him a lot of damage because he can use his ability so frequently. Let's keep nerfing his ultimate. Why don't they just take away the true damage of his ult? Because that's the whole problem, They've right? They've done like, that, and people got mad. And then they put it back, but then they nerfed the damage three times. <laughs> yeah, the problem is his ult is so easy to hit that it can't be that powerful. So, yeah. Anyway. But right now, it's just, even if you see it, you can just take it. Even if it's kind of a weaker hero, you can just take the damage and not care. Hold on, i got to check something. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You just you just don't care. Uh, the the biggest problem is when you're like if you're like an opposing 
you know, major marksman. Don't get hit by his holy embers, I want to say, his two. Holy Rain of Fire, whatever it's called. No, uh, Rain of Fire. Holy yeah. Embers is his ult. Yeah, don't don't get hit by his two, because you'll you'll die to his ult if you're squishy. Other than that The main thing I can see sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say the main thing I can see going for him now is since his fire crash has very short cooldown, like three seconds, maybe shorter. Um Barrett's agony, he can just keep that up on enemies if he keeps hitting them with it. Yeah. Um so he can put allow away a lot of health with good aim. The thing is, we can say that for, like, literally every mage. <laughs> like, with Bear's Agony, That's they can do true, this. But the, main, the main reason is that his cooldown is so short right? that he can keep it up so much. Like, he could have them perpetually agonied. <laughs> so much agony. Uh, ah! I sleep! <clears throat> well, the, I think the passive is called Torture, though. But anyway. Moving on. Gilder, okay, Gilder got buffed a couple of patches ago, I want to say. Uh, meaning he can play as a tank, but still do reasonable damage because his base damage was buffed, right? So that mm. helped, but his kid is just so stupid. <laughs> like, you have to get in super close to use your ult, but his two is like super duper long range. It's like I don't understand. I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> and his and his passive is terrible. Like when he uses his one, I'd rather I'd rather his passive not be affixed to his one. I'd rather just have the dash and not have to sit here and self stun myself when I use it. <laughs> it's just like... his passive would be better if it happened immediately. If it didn't have such a long animation, his passive. Would, his passive would be better. You can literally walk away and not get hit by it. His passive would be better if it wasn't a passive. It just said he, he loves gold. <laughs> and that's his passive. Because well, literally, I'd rather auto-attack. I would rather just auto-attack than have to sit there and self-stun myself. He used to get rather big shields, but I feel like they've changed them. Um, because they used to stack if he used all of his abilities one after another. His shields would get pretty big, but they don't do that anymore. So I don't know if that was a hidden patch or if I missed it in the notes or something. But it would help him a lot, but he just doesn't get that anymore. Well, one thing we can say is that uh, please play him as a support nowadays. He used to be able to play him as a, kind of a mage a bit, but those days are over. He doesn't do enough damage. He just kind of dies, and his kit sucks. So if you're going to play him, play him as a support. Do not play him with the DS lane. For some, piece, for some reason, people think they can play him in DS lane. I, I just crap on their faces <laughs> with literally any hero that... Like, I can play, like, five DS lane heroes, and I just... Destroy him every single time, so we don't even try. Mm. Anyway, uh, Vera. Vera, we've harped on this a lot, but her ult spreads, so it's hard to, like, do team fights. Yeah. Even if they're near minions, they won't really. It will spread. It will primarily hit the hero, but the minions will take some of it to where you can't reliably kill people. And once you do her combo of 2 1 ult, and if you don't kill them, you're kind of stuck. Right. And the other thing is that even if you buy Boomstick, which helps a bit, Boomstick only goes off once per ability hit per five second cooldown. So, um, yeah. Also, if Vera, I mean, if you get used to Vera, it's interesting because sometimes you, you go 2 3 once, sometimes you go 2 1 3. Uh, one thing is people don't rem remember her passive. You always want to 2 first. Yeah, I know that's obvious, but people like to, like, one and then two. It's like, no, you want the most damage thing to be at the end because then that's when their magic defense is reduced. Anyway, I'm going on long enough because I've played Vera before, but it's like, if you're going to play Vera, at least play her right. But mm. probably shouldn't play Vera. <clears throat> All right, anyway. Uh, tier Not for four. Stooges. <laughs> these, these two. The biggest thing with these two is the animations. They just... They're self stun kings. <laughs> They're just like, mm. why? Could, could you just do the ability without stunning yourself, please? <laughs> mm. Omega's yeah. one, two, and actually three, if you think about it. But his one and two are both like, duh, duh, and like, it's it's like, why do you got to jump like that? His two, why do you got to like take a big backswing like that? <laughs> it's like, yeah. And Toro, yeah. He, he has to sit there and go, Rawr, <laughs> in order to use his two. His three. Mm. He, I didn't real. I played. I tore, played Toro for the first time in a long time the other day, and I didn't realize his 
this the animation the cast time for is three is super long too it's it's extremely short range as far as his jump forward so you're not going to catch anyone anyway but on top of that the cast the cast time is just like half a second to a second and you're sitting there like i'm about to jump and i'm just oh my goodness i just can't with these two no yeah it's just terrible it's terrible there omega has a lot of fans and he can juke people well i guess but that's not really going to help you much in the team fight Don't like I... if he can't if your counterplay is just keep moving he can't hit you that's not good design the funny... we need to redo <laughs> his animations <laughs> the funny thing with omega is they always pick disrupt on him but yet his one and two stun towers the literally the only character that can do that and it's funny because uh, like he, can. he still can I believe so. Wasn't we that? haven't seen it changed. I thought that was a bug. Anyway, um, but the funny thing is, like, first of all, how does a how do you stun a tower? Like, oh my god, I'm so dizzy. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, oh. but I don't know. It's just so funny uh, with Omega. The one thing you, Omega can do theoretically, if you're gonna play these people, one thing Omega can do is push the wave, and you can never catch him because his one gives him a lot of speed and shields. So he just like lead him on a wild goose chase, and Toro. Mm -hmm. If you just stand there and people are bad at, at targeting, they attack you and you take all the damage and your team wipes them up. Both yeah. rely on your opponents being bad, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, they're good if your opponents can't make good decisions. Well, that about wraps it up. I know you're super tired and I got to go do a podcast, but thanks for watching, guys. And uh, head to our tier list. And once you go to our tier list, click on some other stuff. We got some good articles for you. We've... Put a lot of effort in this game, figuring out ability ranges, ability mechanics, a lot of statistical articles, a lot of theory crafting articles, and we uh, hope you give it a try. Any last words? Uh, not really. Go listen to the Tower Dive podcast. I won't be there, ladies, so I'm sorry about that. But I believe that TJ is also a very charming man. <laughs> that he is. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.